Don't let people disturb your peace. Don't disturb my groove. Tammy C. Walker, the owner of Dreams Are a Reality. I created this channel to provide light and love. How are you? I am hanging, 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 hanging. Don't disturb this groove. All I want is just me and you. I think I'm messing up the word. One of my favorite songs. Don't disturb this groove. You can be at the top of your game. You can be having a grandy dandy day. You can have meditated, prayed. Do whatever you do in the morning. Jump in your car. Somebody cuts you off. Oh, man. That's some stuff that just pisses me off. <laughs> you can be in the most spectacular mood. And here comes your adult daughter or your spouse. And they say something derogatory. And it just sends you just into a, a mood. Before I get started, hit like, hit subscribe, please share, thank you, thank you. There's just so many things that can disturb your peace. I can go on and on and on till the break of dawn. It's easy to go off on somebody. It's easy to curse somebody out. It's easy to argue back and forth. But... If you want to say you're empowered, if you want to say you got the juice and all of that. If you can control yourself, if you can control your emotions and not lash back out at people. Now you got the juice, you got the power. When we engage in rhetoric that's negative, we lose. Especially when you raise your voice, scream, and do the fool. You lose every time. It never solves anything. Think about those times when you did that. I know I've done it years ago. I don't do it now. If I go, if I go off now at this age, it's probably going to be like, I don't know. I don't even know what would send me off. I'm not saying I don't. I'm perfect and nothing like that. I'm, I'm absolutely not. I'm very emotional, very passionate. Um, and I'm firm. Okay, that I am. Hope I'm not um, um unfair. That's I don't mind being firm, but I don't want to be unfair. But and I try to tell people this when I say people, sometimes it's clients, whatever. Don't be going off on people. It is it's just one of the worst things you can do. What it shows is a lack of discipline. It shows, sometimes, depending on what the situation is, ignorance. It just shows uh, a lack of self-control. Now, there are times in life when you got to fight for injustice. I think if I was a mom and had to fight for my kids, I, I mean, yeah, all bets off when it comes to your babies. An animal knows that. They have to protect their cub or their baby. Yeah, I get that part. But modern day stuff, you know, you're in the store, something didn't go right, and you start screaming at the cashier and the manager. I just don't think so. Um, of course, every situation is different. Hey, love relationship. Are you going off, slam me? Well, you don't slam down the phone no more. You just hit in call or block or whatever it is. People do curse each other out. It's just, it's a waste of energy. And you really lose. People think they're winning, but you really lose. Coming from, uh, you know, a couple of relationships where it was unhealthy and toxic. And uh, being mistreated. Particularly in one. And um, experiencing that for years. That was really something. So after I got away from that. I took that energy and began to do it to another person. So the thing with abusive relationships, you can in turn become the abuser. Isn't that crazy? 
but it's it's a lot it's a lot in that I won't even talk about that right now on here but I had to learn and it took some years let me backtrack a little bit I would say from age 20 I would say 16 because that's when, kind of when you kind of really you know, you've been had your personality but I'm thinking about relationship stuff especially romantic 16 through 29 pretty low-key mellow uh sweet girl that's how I describe myself back then 29 through 35 I'm mad I'm stressed. I'm out of an abusive relationship, but now I'm in in a dark place. So, you know, I'm not saying I went around going off on people. That's not even my personality. I'm saying in romantic situations, I would not handle myself well with certain, with a couple of, I would say two to three guys. By the time I turned 36, I began to study the power of positive thinking, a lot of journaling, praying, and I don't move like that no more. Even even with, you know, my my real long-term serious relationship, I wasn't doing all that cursing. We didn't curse at each other. That wasn't our type of relationship anyway. And I just don't believe in arguing. It's just so silly. It's so silly. Yes, you got to speak up for yourself. People that know me intimately, they know I'm going, Tammy going to speak. I'm not sure. <laughs> Tammy has boundaries, so she's always going to speak up for herself. That's no problem there. But going off screaming and cursing and, you know, shouting, I just don't do that. I just don't. And so you want to be empowered. You want You want to have peace. That's the key. Don't let people disturb your peace. If you're on the phone with them, they are screaming and hollering at you. You simply hang up. And if you want to be polite, you can say, hanging up now. Bye-bye. Hang up. If they are in your home and they don't live with you and they come into your space and they're screaming and hollering at you, you remove them from your house. You tell them, get out. If you are at work, this happened to me a lot back in 2004 through, it was like a window of me. No, 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 no. 2002 through 2005 or something like that. I don't even know because it was a really not a good time in my life. But at work, and I always say this, not to be racist because I'm not at all. But white males, because it kept happening from white males, they would um, scream and holler at me at work. Now, I'm from, again, I always, I always mention this because it's, it's important to me. And you would know if you lived here in Chicago. I'm from the west side of Chicago. West, west side gets bad rap. I don't believe in all that west side, south side. That's just all stupid stuff. But I'm just telling you how they have it here, the how people talk. So West Side, I guess, supposed to be more ghetto. Okay, I'm just going to throw that out there and say that. And um, whatever people say, I, I don't, I'm not ghetto. So I don't know. I, you know, I don't let people put labels on me. But I'm just saying, if I, if I said that, if I went with that, if somebody's hollering at me at work, a West Side Chicago person would get jiggy with them. They're not going to put up with that. But those were times where I had to restrain myself. You know what I'm saying? I didn't curse back at those guys or holler back. Now, what I did do every moment, every time this happened, one time I did not I did not stand up for myself. <laughs> I'll tell you what I did, though. Um, those times when they were hollering at me, uh, two times I didn't stand up for myself. I'm going to tell you what I did. The, the, but the other times that they hollered or cursed, one guy was cursing on my voicemail. So I got him. He avoided me after he did that. But I got him. I told him, you don't ever talk to me like that again. Another guy came to my desk screaming and hollering. I followed him back to his office and told him, you will never speak to me like that again. Another guy was screaming and hollering on the phone. I quit the job. And it was a good job, too. I quit. He was my manager. I quit. No, I'm not working. I'm not. I'm not doing that. 
um, a, a second guy was screaming and hollering on the phone. And I, I was working for a temp agency. I called the agency and said, my purse is in my hand. I'm about to walk out the door. I'm not taking abuse at work. And she fixed it where I no longer had to support him. The other guy that screamed at me and I followed him to the office, I didn't have to support him no more after that. Because I told my manager, I don't come here for abuse. So this is really about keeping your peace, keeping your composure. But it's also about standing up for yourself. Don't let nobody steal your peace. Don't let nobody scream and holler at you at work. When I think of work, and I know I talk about the field I'm in because it's more of a heart feel, social work, therapy, clinician, I should care. You know what I'm saying? I should care. You should care about your job too, whatever you do. However, when you think of hollering, don't don't you think of love? I think of like family, my husband, my boyfriend, my fiance, the love of my life. Not that you should be hollering at each other, but that's emotion. But a job where I'm shuffling papers and you hollering, I don't even connect with work like that, that type of work that I was doing back in the day. That just didn't make any sense. I'm just saying, protect your peace. Protect your mental health. Protect your health. 2023, almost 2024, we talking about getting the bag, grinding, making our money, being a millionaire, this and that. If you don't have no peace, if your health is in shambles, if you do not know your name, if you can't go to the washroom without assistance, these are the most invaluable things that you can have on this earth. I feel if you have a solid mind... If your body is good, you can make all the money, create all the inventions, make all the songs, the clothes, the food. You know, you can just create the music, the art that you desire. Be a great actor, actress, professor, whatever it is. Have your own business, entrepreneurship. If your mind is right, if your mental health is right, if your health is right. So money, it shouldn't be first. Like, you know, people say, what's the one thing you want? Money, money, money. I'm in shock when I hear that sometimes because your health is your wealth. You can make the money. Like some people, they'll see a Tesla or they'll see a BMW, whatever your car is, Mercedes. I want that. I want that. Easily, we can all get that easily. Now, it comes at a price. If you work a full-time job, you may have to work two full-time jobs, which I wouldn't recommend. That, that's just not healthy. But if you really want that BMW, you too can have it. So when people say they want money, money is limitless. You can make money. It's a lot, and especially this day and age, you can make money a lot of ways. So I don't know why people always say they want money versus other stuff, but you know, I am learning and have learned. I think when you face the major illness, and not just my kind that I had, any type of illness or or uh, um, breakdown, nervous breakdown or something like that, it changes your perspective on life. And you understand that money is not the be-all. I'm not against money. I, 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 I desire more of it as well. <laughs> And I appreciate it. I respect money, though. Now, I respect money. But I don't worry about it. Like, I used, I used to be so worried about money. It caused me great anxiety. Great. Because I grew up with what? Money don't grow on trees. We don't have enough money. Although both of my parents did good. They both had great jobs with pensions, everything. But this was the topic in our home. So a lot of this stuff is belief systems, mindsets. Watch your peace. Protect your peace at all times. It is um, priceless. It really is. Let me know what you think. Have a good day. Tammy Sharice Walker signing off. Bye-bye.